right. My boy Mike drove up to, to film tonight. I'm trying to get some uh, some sick footage tonight. I'm trying to get us a deer down. It's our first sit in Michigan. So pumped up. Let's do it. October 3rd today? October 3rd. Let's do it. the Michigan farm and uh, yeah we don't know what to expect uh, I did get a picture of a new buck the other night and uh, I don't know what deer it is but he looked mature I'd, I'd probably shoot him if, if he did come through here um, obviously we're out here after my main target buck that I nicknamed uh, Loki but uh, anything can happen I got my boy Michael filming tonight we'll see what happens we're gonna get nestled in here and it should be a good evening Oh, that was a uh, pretty good first go in. Uh, super happy just to see some deer. We saw five or six deer and three or four bucks. Um, They're all pretty small deer, but just just to get in there and see them all funnel in into the bean field that we planted. And uh, I think the closest ones got like 40 or 50 yards maybe, but they're out there a ways. But just to get in there and see some deer, that's, that's awesome. I was, I was super stoked with tonight's sit, so. Excited to get back out here tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be even better, I think. season and uh, I couldn't really tell where the shot was but it looked like I smoked her. I was gonna shoot her at like 50. I've been shooting at 80 all, all day in the yard and I was gonna shoot her at 50 and I was gonna shoot her at 40 and then she came into 30 and I drew and she turned towards me so I was full draw for two minutes and finally I'm like man we gotta put my bow down. Put the bow down then she finally turned broadside and yeah first year of the year it feels good to I didn't, kill, I didn't kill a deer last year, so October 5th, October 6th, segment 2, the rise hunt, let's go get her. Thanks Jake for filming, appreciate it buddy. There's not much tracking to do, She, uh, I hit her just a little bit high, she ducked, but yeah, better than uh, having to go look for her for a couple hours, but super excited to get that first deer out of the way this year, so go check her out. That's uh, that's Nick. <laughs> he just shot a big buck, and he don't know if he hit a stick or not. But two of the rise guys let one fly tonight. We, we'll uh, we'll figure out what happens with the uh, the buck Nick shot. We don't know if it's a good hit or or not. I guess we'll find out. But 
Here's a doe that we just shot. Is she dead? I hope she's dead. That looks pretty dead. That's my first uh, first kill with the expedition mountaineer. Also with those uh, new B3 exoskeletal broadheads. <clears throat> I hit that deer high and she went straight down. She definitely dropped. <laughs> yeah, she went down. She got a little spine. Pretty good one. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Rise Hunt segment series is brought to you by Huntwise, Deer Grow, Redneck Blinds, Badlands Packs, Expedition Archery, Back 40 Butt Calls, B3 Archery, and Cook's Fatal Attraction Deer Scent. The hunt for Mr. Bobby Boucher. Man, this was such a cool hunt. This was the first hunt for me for the 2019 season. It was October 5th in an Illinois lease. I just climbed up in a hang on overlooking one of our uh, one of our food plots that we planted and we just had a front come through, a little storm come through and man, I had deer moving from all over and uh, it wasn't within 30 minutes of the hunt. I look over to my, over my right shoulder and I see big antlers standing there right next to the water trough and I didn't realize what buck it was till after the hunt um, but it turned out to be Bobby Boucher, who's this big eight point my dad passed last year as a three year old. And uh, here he was standing at 100 yards uh, and he was right downwind of me and he knew something wasn't right. And uh, he turned around and went back down the hill. But it wasn't until uh, an hour later he comes back up with a couple other bucks and uh, gives me a little encounter. And I'm excited for you guys to see the hunt. It was a fun hunt. Hope you enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to chasing Bobby Boucher the rest of the season. October 5, and this day for the first time in Illinois, first time for the whole season, I am pumped. I'm sitting over at Greenfield, it's kind of warm today, we had a nice day, and about an hour and a half ago, we had this front move in, rain, thunder, lightning, and it just stopped and we just got out of here, so we already saw some deer on the road when we were driving in, I'm up on their feet moving, so Hopefully that's a good sign that they're going to come in here. I'm sitting over this green field and uh, the reason I'm sitting here is because of the warm temps. It seems like the deer like to hit these green fields um, rather than hitting the beans or corn and getting those carbs. They like to come in here and kind of get that protein um, that we have. So we have some turnips, some wheat and oats and stuff like that planted in this field. So um, they, they, they grew pretty good. Um, they could have been better, but I'm not, uh, I'm not complaining. So um, I don't really know what deer we have out here yet. Uh, we haven't checked trail cameras. So um it's gonna be kind of a surprise you know I, I don't know what i'm gonna see you know if i see some deer great um you know i might take a shot at a doe if one presents me the opportunity and um you know don't, don't really know i'm just excited to get in the stand first hunt i always feel uh, i always feel a little uh, unorganized so um i feel like i finally got everything forgot my face mask but hey i'm sitting up about 30 feet so hopefully nothing sees me up here i'm gonna sit here i'm gonna relax i'm gonna enjoy the first hunt of the year and uh I'll take what I can get. Hopefully I see something, but if not, hey, I'm out in the woods hunting, so it doesn't get much better than that.
bad way to start out. So far, if, uh, I don't know, I've probably seen half dozen does, and then uh, just had this uh, nice buck come around the corner here. It looked like a big eight point. We had we had a big eight point on camera last year that was hanging around this area, so he might have been might have been that deer, but he was a potential shooter. I needed him to take a few more steps out to get a real good look at his rack, but from what I could tell in, in my binoculars and the camera, he looked like a good buck, but I'm kind of hunting this stand on a marginal wind. Um, it's kind of like a, a south-southwest wind, which is borderline okay for this stand. And I had a couple of does come out and they kind of spooked. Um, and then he came out and, and he could tell something wasn't right. He just kind of stood there for five minutes and then turned around and, and went back down. So he didn't seem like he really spooked, but he knew something wasn't right. So hoping maybe later on he comes back out and checks his field. I still got a doe here feeding uh, in my field. So kind of like a live decoy, but it's been a good, uh, been a good first 30 minutes of the sit so far. seeing deer coming from all different directions. I just had three does feeding like 20 yards, 25 yards in front of me for the past 20 minutes. I had this little like, I don't know, little funky rack, maybe a four or five point or something, I'm running in, grunting, pushing these does around already. So it was good to, to kind of see some, uh, some bucks uh, chasing some does already, so. One decent buck come out, and then another better buck, and then a giant step out. It's my first hunt of 2019, and gosh, I wish this wind would, this wind like pretty much died, and it just rained, and so all my, I feel like all my thermals, everything are dropping down, and those deer came in pretty much dead downwind on me, and that the first buck that came out got within. He was within uh, 15 yards from me, and all of a sudden he just stopped and knew something wasn't right. I think he was, he was smelling me. He kind of walked away. The other buck come out. He was within probably 50 yards, and then the big boy stepped out behind him. I think he's a big eight point. I'm not sure. We have a trail camera right there, so um, I'm hoping he got some pictures of him, but I'm already shaking. Well, I think that's going to do it for me for that first time. I had a few more 
dolls come in the food plot. And then uh, something was, another deer started blowing over here and kind of spooked these deer out a little bit. So I got maybe maybe five minutes left to shoot my, if that. But uh, hey, hey, that was a good hunt. I, I was excited. I saw a lot of deer. I saw some nice bugs. And uh, and um, I couldn't be I couldn't be happier if if uh, if that wind was just a little bit more steady or in a different direction I think I would have had a good chance of killing that one big buck. So I should have sat over in that redneck blind. I head over there if I would have sat there I think my wind would have been okay. And I think um, I think I would have got a shot at that big buck. He only would have been about 30 yards from me. So but hey, for the first time I can't complain. So. I'm going to pack up and uh, get back out here tomorrow. First cold front of the year is here and we are rolling south to my buddy Cameron's house. Uh, I really wasn't sure last week where to go for this cold front and he invited me down. He's got two big bucks, Rocky and Apollo, that we're going after tonight. They're both coming in the same spot so depending on who shows up is going to depend on who's shooting and who's filming. So fingers crossed these are some really big deer. Uh, Rocky's about 160 inch mainframe 8 with split brows and Apollo's probably uh, high 130s, 140, just big fat four or five year old eight pointer. So we're hoping to put, uh, put one of them on the ground tonight. And fingers crossed, I am just jacked up excited. If I kill him, I'm going to take Papa and put him there.
way home from Southern Ohio. I had a blast hunting with Cameron the past couple days. Uh, just our two shooters didn't come in. But beautiful cold front, beautiful property. Hopefully we'll be back down once the corn gets cut and we can put these boys on the ground. But Cameron and Caitlin, I cannot thank you enough for everything you did for me this weekend. Let me come down and stay. Uh, hopefully we can do it again soon. Uh, got about a three and a half hour drive back to Michigan and yeah, just enjoy it. Well, I uh, figure it's probably best during season here to get a few shots and make sure everything's all dialed in. I'll uh, get head out tonight to a uh, spot that we call the Finger and uh, usually it's one of our better spots but really don't know what to expect since we haven't had any cameras there. Uh, last time I was in there though it, it did thicken up. It looked like a tornado pretty much went through that area so that's going to help us out there. But uh, it's just a little finger um, with some, some standing corn by it and whatnot. But Nonetheless, we're uh, you get a few shots in and uh, make sure we're all dialed in for night just in case if it ends up happening. Well, uh, I think we're doing pretty good right now, actually. It's been a been a minute since I've shot, to be honest with you. Just been so busy working a normal job and then working at the bow shop and don't really get to shoot as much as I've been liking lately. But uh, I think I'll, I'll settle with the with this at 40 yards for right now. That got interesting quick. I knew this is one of my favorite spots here on the farm. I sneak up through the creek and then just climb up in this tree and there's a little finger of woods that runs out and then we got a strip of corn standing corn right now. And I was sitting here but setting up all my stuff to look out in the corn. I just see a rack. And then uh, so I hurried up trying to finish it up getting all my stuff hung up. And there's a little buck that came out right here. And I said, watch that buck, he started going away from us and uh, and then all of a sudden just start rocking some toes around. They came by about 35 yards and I figured he would come right through there too. And I took him a little bit, but sure enough he did, 35 yards. Oh, that was tempting. Uh, he's, uh, he's a pretty good deer, but I think we, we need one more year with that, but with him. But it's not even four o'clock right now and I've already had a heck of a sit. I just watched the footage back up in the tree and uh, I don't like it. I hit a branch on the way right to him. But, oh man, good 
I'm going down here and see if, see if we can see for blood. All right, uh, just got back to the truck here. Kyle came in and gave us a hand and uh, waiting on buddy Jerry. He's uh, bringing the laptop so we can place back on the laptop and uh, be able to see what, see what we can find. Um, I don't know, I hit a branch about halfway so it scares scares the crap out of me. But uh, listen back at the footage, you can hear, hear it hit. So um, just the question is, I don't know where it hit him. So hopefully when Jerry gets here with the laptop, we can put, put it on there and uh, be able to figure that out and get a better idea. But I went down there and I couldn't find my arrow, couldn't find blood, couldn't find hair or nothing like that. So I'm in panic mode right now, sick to my stomach. But um, hopefully once Jerry gets here and we put it on the laptop, we got a little bit better footage. Um, if not, then we're just going to go in there around where uh, where it was and see if we can't find anything since, you know, it's pretty easy to overlook. But uh, it's a waiting game right now, I'm crossing our fingers, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good news for you here soon. Still don't know. I don't know. I'm losing hope as the time goes on, but we'll get in there with the dog and do the best effort that we can to try to find this deer. And hopefully we have him good enough to where he's going to expire, but I'm losing doubt as the time goes. So uh, we'll see, see how things go in the morning, I guess. Alright, well it's uh, next morning I'm heading back out to the farm to see if we can't get back on this deer. Um, we tracked him quite a ways last night and uh, just, you know, a little bit of blood, a little bit of blood, but uh, we ended up bumping him out of bed. There uh, wasn't a lot of blood in the bed or as we were following him or tracking him last night, but um, I, just, I, I don't know where I hit him. I dissected the footage frame by frame. And, Still couldn't figure it out, so I don't know. The best thing we can do is just put in every ounce of effort that I can to try to recover this deer, and we'll go from there. I mean, I want to say he's dead, but I, I can't tell you, and I want to say that he's gonna live, but I can't tell you. So we're just gonna do every bit that we can to try to recover this deer. It's the best that we can do. Well, I wish I had better news, but um, we looked last night for about two, uh, two to three hours, backed out, um, came back out this morning, looked some more, decided to call in the dog, called in the dog, dog pretty much ran about the same amount that we did, then kind of lost interest and couldn't find anything more. Um, we just walked all the creeks, trying to check the creeks, seeing if you went to water. Um, the only other thing I got going is uh, there's a guy around here who flies a plane around and uh, checks from the sky, you know, if they're in the fields or something dead, but um, have him do a little bit of flying around as a last resort. But as of right now, I feel like, um, I feel like that deer's gonna get a live. You know, we put in pretty much as much effort as a uh, as possibly can and uh, there's only so many places around here for him to go in, to go and hide but sucks but I guess that's haunting it's been a while since that something like that's happened to me even but uh, you know if you're bow hunting enough that's what's gonna happen especially if you hit a twig and uh, deflect your shot but I don't care how much you practice or nothing you can really do about that other than trim your stands a little bit more but Nonetheless, I could give this place a week or two to cool down probably and uh, we'll be back after it and uh, hopefully maybe we can get a picture of him confirm that he's alive because uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping at this point at least.